break it to you, but sex education of the past failed us. Because birds and bees, they don't fuck. Welcome to Birds and Bees Don't Fuck, a podcast where we learn exactly how bad our formative sex education, or lack thereof, really was. I'm your host, Arielle Zadok. I'm an intimacy coordinator, producer, and sexologist. <laughs> How did I forget that? <laughs> My guest today is the founder and creative director of The Play LA, an LA-based play party that prioritizes health, consent, intimacy, and artistry. Welcome to the show, Michael Hollis. Thank you for having me. Hi. What's going on? Oh, you know, just still reeling off of saturday's play party <laughs> well thank you for stopping by yeah thank you for having me it's always a pleasure when someone's like come to my play party <laughs> <laughs> it's my thing <laughs> it is but i would you know i honestly was uh checking out oh look see i'm gonna remember i'm gonna remember my little timer um, haha look everybody i'm doing things um and i'm also just casually playing with this cock ring and i love that um, this cock ring is now my fidget spinner. Um, <laughs> apparently that thing is dead. So my great. cock is actually my fidget spinner. Oh, you know <laughs> what? My favorite thing that a penis can do is the helicopter. Yeah. Well, it's, it's, it is a, it's an interesting move. Um, it's fun until, you know, you just slap something you shouldn't have, you know, in a <laughs> helicopter and you slap your balls. It's like, Oh, so I, have a dream. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Interesting way to start off uh, this recording during Black History Month. It, it is. It is. <laughs> it's a it's a very different one, yeah. but I do believe it can bring people together in, so in a very different way. I want to see a dual helicopter where the penises do a double slap on the bottom and the top. I feel like it's very difficult and... Well, at the play, we um, do re take requests for people's fantasies, so uh, note it. I just feel like <laughs> maybe there's a way. Oh, there's a way. If there's a will, there's a way. <laughs> I, I went very deep into trying to figure it out one day. I was mm. like, well, if this one's spinning this way, but then they'd have to be like a certain, they'd have to be a certain length. And <laughs> Yeah, and, and are we talking, you know, are they, is it a face-to-face -face slap or is it like a side-to-slide? Because if it's side-to-side, -side, I feel like there's some a lot of hip action that's kind of. Yeah, and I mean, a I feel like of length as well. Yeah, like you got to have the hip action there. Yeah. Definitely the length, but I feel like it's more of like, how do we get these two penises to do like the, you know, like when you're walking by your buddy and it's like low high. Yeah. You know, I want a low high, but with but with dicks. I think also it's like surface area too, because you do want to hear a little. Oh, clap, right? yeah. Listen, we can get a foley artist in there if we don't have the clap. It's okay. <laughs> you know. <laughs> okay. We can, we can a, edit. I know, I know a sound engineer. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I just feel like you're a dream maker. And so like, maybe you can make this dream come oh, true. We'll, we'll do it. We'll do it. That's, <laughs> that's my word. I will jump with glee. <laughs> seriously, I don't know why, but the helicopter is just like, it's so much fun. Play your cards right. We'll see what happens on this podcast. <laughs> Oh man. Okay. So, uh, yeah, I do. I do want to talk about this weekend because it was so fucking magical. Oh, man. Um, and like I told you that night, like it was really also a pleasure just to like watch you work. I really enjoy watching people work. Mm. Maybe that's a weird kink, but, um, especially facilitators and like producers and directors, like people that do the type of stuff that I do. Yeah. I love watching them do it because like, I know, I know what it takes. I know what you're doing. And I know how much heart you specifically have in what you do. Mm -hmm. And I really love that um, one. I mean, there was so much that I loved about it. And I'm going to I think I'm pretty, pretty sure I'm going to write a sub stack about it. So stay tuned. Um, but um, I really love how once everyone was in and the doors were closed and like, OK, now now we're going to like begin. Mm -hmm. I really love how we had the collective experience. It yes. wasn't like only some people get the consent talk or like only the new people get like this or that or anything. It was like, Hey, we're all in this now. Like we're all here together. Look around the room. Look at these people. Yeah. It's, it's super important for us to ground people in consent when they get there. Mm -hmm. and, and that's why we have our doors close at 10. Um, Cause now we know everyone's here, right? Yeah. This is the people that we're going to be journeying with. Um, and 
sometimes we adjust the consent talk or it evolves. We find out more information about the consent talk. Our, our consent talk used to be like, you know, hey, if it's not a fuck yes, it's a no. And if it's a no, we say, thank you for taking care of yourself. But we've added bits and parts like, you know, consent is an ongoing collaboration, mm -hmm. um, which is one of my favorite lines because it's not just the uh, pre and during the act consent, it's the post consent as well. Yeah. You know, making sure people walk away from the experience feeling good. And, you know, I, I'm not sure how long we need to keep that collaboration going, you know, but yeah. at the same time, I think it speaks to aftercare. Yeah. When it comes to consent. Yeah, I totally agree. And I think like, I love that you use the word collaboration because that's the word that I use in my coaching and the word mm -hmm. that I use obviously with intimacy coordinating because all of this stuff is a collaboration. Every sexual experience that you have outside of just yourself, which arguably that's a collaboration with your body as well, but like yeah. sex in and of itself is a collaboration. So when whether we're talking about consent, whether we're talking about desires, whether we're talking about aftercare, like whatever, whatever part of the sex we're talking about, mm -hmm. it's always a collaboration. And, and it makes people feel good when, you know, you've put in the work to flirt, right? That's our that's our post sex or consent collaboration. And then while you're engaging in sex, it's still this collaboration of like, hey, does that feel good? Yeah. Do you like that? Mm -hmm. Um and then after, how was that for you? Yeah. Did, did we fulfill everything or do you feel good walking away from this you know experience and it doesn't have to be those words, but it could be an action of like, you know, a a passionate hug after, yeah. you know, or a nod or just eye gazing for a second and then moving on, but making sure that there is some sort of post conversation um is, is something that I've been learning as well, you yeah. know, and, and that's unlearning what we've been taught. You know, and that's, I think with men in this space, um, you know, hetero men in this space, uh, we've been taught so many times like, hey, once you have sex, all right, mission accomplished, get on out. Ooh, you know, so yeah. it's, it's really helps, you know, shift the culture. And I'll, I'll be saying that a lot today yeah. um, because part of shifting the culture is making sure that it doesn't just feel like this transaction that happened. Yeah. Um, it feels like this friendship that occurred, this relationship that, that has been sparked. Yeah. And one thing that overwhelmingly I felt about the whole party was that it wasn't a party. It was an experience. Mm, thank you. Which that's... like I knew, I kind of knew, like that's the vibe that I got before I knew you, before you and I actually like mm -hmm. hopped on a call and mm -hmm. had a conversation, which was like so fun. Because of course, both of us were like, blah, blah, blah. <laughs> <laughs> we're just like, we're going to have plenty of things to talk about. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, it really, that's kind of what I, I had always felt about what I knew about the play. And it really did feel like this beautiful, magical, holistic experience. And I did actually link up with somebody. I did hook up with somebody. And our aftercare after like the the last sexual experience that we had, um, we we were like down in the dungeon area and we cuddled for like, we were, we were just in a vortex. Like yeah. we came up, okay, first of all, <laughs> this is the best. So we're downstairs. We, we like spoon cuddle, talk, like all that stuff for like an, I, I I couldn't even tell you how long it was. Mm -hmm. All I know is that we came upstairs and I smelled fresh baked cookies and all of a sudden it was like just about four o'clock in the morning. And it was like, how in the fuck did it get? Like the last time I remember was 1130 when we were going up to the Tantra workshops, which mm -hmm. were also amazing. Mm -hmm. Like, yeah. Yeah. We, I actually heard from, you know, people, cause I'm, I didn't, get a chance to go to the workshops. I'm, I'm, you know, facilitating this experience. Yeah. But on Monday, um, I hear that during the Yoni worship period, um, there was a time where the facilitator said, you know, all the women in the room, I want you to make a sound that um, kind of emulates the pain that your yoni's experienced. Oh. You know, let out a noise that um, is reflective of that pain. And the whole room bust into tears. Wow. You know, you thought it was going to be maybe like a howl or something like that, but then it's just, you know, 30 or 40 women just crying. And the masculine that they were with holding space for them or their partner, maybe it was another feminine partner. But point is, is that, you know, that crying was um, 
received in the manner of, hey, it's it's okay. Thank you. And you've honored this space by by showing up and, and being vulnerable. And we kind of talked about this. The the point of the party is vulnerability. Mm. Right? When, when you get into these play spaces, um, if everybody agrees to be a little bit more vulnerable, then we start having this experience versus party. Yes. Yes, yes, yes. And I think it was really helpful that again, in the beginning, and and this was a, a point where, oh no, I think Luna did do some stuff with all of us collectively. Like I think mm-hmm. we took some breaths together and and like we really collectively grounded ourselves in the space and you yeah. did a beautiful job setting us up for like what the evening yeah. was and all of us being there. Allie, of course, she did a great consent talk oh, and yeah. like our little consent fairy. Shout out to Allie Eisman. Pleasure, pa- passport, passport to pleasure. Passport to pleasure. Shout, pleasure. Out. Shout out, baby. Um, <laughs> she's great. If you want to go to the play, like hook up with her. She'll guide you. She literally guided me into the room, which was like such mm. a beautiful aspect too. And I was like, I mean, I've just had so much shit going on this week with like my car and jobs yeah. and all this stuff. Um, and so like, I had a lot of anxious energy walking into the room, which I knew because like my adrenaline was going, I had so much going on. And I was like, I cannot wait to get to the play. I just want to be in that space because I knew I would be held. And I didn't even, because everything happened so quickly, like I had a shoot cancel and then I was like, Oh my God, I could go. So like it all happened very quickly for me. I didn't even get a chance to tell her that I was going to be there, mm-hmm. <laughs> but I was like, whatever. By the time I was driving in, I was like, oh my God, I didn't even tell Allie. She's going to see me on a list. It's fine. She's going to know. Uh, and so she was the one that like took me in and guided me into the space and introduced me to the space. She dropped me off with, um, the, the fire play guy, which was awesome. Got Oof. some fire off my booty. Um, so it was like really, really beautiful, but she also does the consent talk, which is really lovely and beautiful. And she's just has such a great energy. Um, So that was great. Um, But what I was going to say with the experience, um, God, I have so much to say. (laughs) No, it's okay. Take take your time. It's a lot. I know. This one and this one. Uh, Because it was really like it, it, I just have such a high appreciation for curated experiences Mm -hmm. that are really grounding and really do kind of let you let go of so much that we walk through the door with, which is some of the language that you used on the day. Um, But one of the one of the things that I really liked about the Tantra exercise. So I, I met someone and we immediately like we kind of meshed together. We were playing with some electro play stuff, which was super fun. That was the first time that I got to play with that, which mm-hmm. is why I love play parties too, is that you get to experiment with different things and you get to meet different people that have different areas of expertise. So first time we touched electric, literally. First time we kissed electric, <laughs> literally. So that's funny. Um, but we wound up like linking up for the the Tantra exercises too, just oh, because awesome. of like, we wound up doing like a lot of the exercises together. Cause like we kind of established the thing when yeah. we did the um, desires, intentions, boundaries, we did that together. So like we were kind of just like on this journey together, which was really <clears throat> fucking great. Cause that doesn't happen a lot, you know? Yeah. Well, that's kind of the tricky part um, with play parties because- a lot of times it feels as if they're built for couples. Mm -hmm. And when you come as a single, um, you kind of have to like, okay, well, who is going to be that person that I kind of drop in with deeply? Mm. Like maybe I hook up with a bunch of people, but is there like somebody out there that I'm actually going to really have a friendship with? And that's what we try to facilitate and support. Like, okay, there's a a lot of people. We're going to have you eye gaze with three or four people. Mm -hmm. So at least you drop in, you know, I, I want to say deeply, but I'll, let's say differently yeah. than just this verbal communication. Um, you know, cause my, my wife, she is an introvert yeah. and I'm an extrovert. And so what I found is like, you know, look, I can talk to anybody. Um, but she is not as, um, eager to have conversation, yeah. you know? Um, so when we provide the eye gazing experience, it's like, here's this nonverbal and a uh, verbal way for us to drop in. Um, and we know, you know, the eyes are the windows to the soul. And if you just, I mean, you know, when sometimes you eye gaze and you eye gaze with somebody for like two minutes and you start bawling, crying, with mm. them, you know, so we try to get it to 30 seconds. Yeah. Um, and in that 30 seconds, it can just say so much. You start finding people's, I like finding people's dominant eye during the eye gaze. Yeah, You'll yeah. You'll notice like people will switch from, from eye to eye and I'll just like keep going back and forth to like, until we really both calm down into it. But yeah, we, that, that's kind of how we set this experience up. You know, this is why it's an eight hour experience. Yeah. And, um, 
you know, we've evolved into my favorite saying for the play is, you know, purchasing a ticket to the play is like purchasing a day pass to a sex positive festival. Yeah. Yeah. There's going to be workshops. There's going to be DJs. There's going to be performances. Um, and then sex feels as if it's just like one of these options that I can mm -hmm. do. It's not the main focus. There's so many people that just did the workshops and, and never went down to the dungeon. Yeah. You know? um, and so it's kind of choose your own adventure um, in a sex positive space. So that's really the goal is to create a space of of sexual and creative freedom. Mm -hmm. And it didn't even feel overtly sexual. It felt sensual. And that is a fundamental difference. Yes. Because I am the type, like, I love sex. Like, I love doing it all. Obviously, like, this is my chosen path in life. Wait, like, you oh, like sex? I know. It's so Get weird. Get out of here. I mean, usually <laughs> I don't actually, which is why I want to teach people how to fuck, specifically men, um, so sure. that the labor is not on the women they are with. Cause that's the thing. But, um, you know, I'm, I'm always like, I don't really play at play parties because it's very hard for me to find somebody that I'm actually attracted to that I want to connect with. And like, I'm just like, it's probably gonna be bad. So I don't really care. Um, but with this person again, like we, it was very organic. It was very natural. And like, it did feel like we were on this whole journey together that like, if I never see him again, I had this incredible relationship with this person for a night. And that's so beautiful. And it's like such a magical thing. And that's, you know, this is kind of a little getting into non-monogamy too, but for monogamy as well, I do believe that when we are with people, there is an opportunity to see that specific in-person time together as its own relationship. And when your intention is to create the best relationship you possibly can for that time, you show up differently. Yeah. And I, I think it speaks to, you know, truly living in the moment mm. where, hey, I've, I may have other relationships outside of this party or, um, you know, maybe I've been monogamous up until this party, uh, but I got here and I dropped in with this person and we are here now. And I think that's what's cool about play parties is that it could be this just awesome one night stand that's just understood. Mm -hmm. It's a one night stand. But during that one night stand, let's go deep. Let's yeah. like really be with each other. And yeah. so it's um, I, that is the culture I, I really love at play parties. But it, again, not making someone feel as if it was a one night stand, mm -hmm. you know, making somebody feel that this is this one night adventure that we went on and this journey that we went on. Yeah. And if I see you again, great, but I'll always hold on to that journey. Exactly. And I actually did say that to him too. I was like, you know, we, we were like reflecting on it because we are in touch now. Um, and that was something that I said, I was like, listen, if we never see each other ever again, if nothing ever comes of this, and that was the only time that we ever spend together, it will always be this beautiful, magical memory and experience. Mm -hmm. And the whole thing was beautiful and intimate and sexy and all of those things. And so like, thank you for that. And you know, all mm -hmm. of that. And, and that's like, that is rare to find and it's rare to experience. So I have a lot of respect for what it is that you're creating because we have so many blocks against those things. And I think that comes down to how you curate the events and also like how you curate the people because you are interviewing people and that's not something that we see often. Yeah. And I, well, so there's four main differences between us and other play parties. Um, First is our, our arts, which, which really go to our four pillars, um, which is health, consent, intimacy, and artistry. Mm -hmm. Health being number one. When uh, my wife and I started the play, um, we were going to so many play parties. You know, when I found, when we both found out about, you know, the ethically non-monogamous world, um, it felt like, you know, vampires were living amongst us. Yeah. Like, what the <laughs> fuck is going on? Like vampires. these parties are wild and there's like... There's code words, you know, when you ask somebody oh, like, yeah. hey, are you in the lifestyles? Like, what lifestyle do you mean? Like, never mind. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right. Moving right along. Okay. Yeah. So um, we were going to parties and parties claim to be safe spaces, but the, the, the claim is very word of mouth. 
mm, right? Mm -hmm. uh, or, or a feeling and not to take any way thing away from like the feelings that you have of these spaces that, you know, are quote unquote safe spaces that that feeling is real. Um, but how can we create documentation around the safe space? Yeah. And so that's when we were like, you know what, if we're going to do these parties, we're going to require STI testing. Yeah, I love that. Um, and our STI testing has to be within 90 days of the party you want to attend. Mm -hmm. um, now, I understand that seems like a lot of time. I get it. Um, but the community that we have that it's grown to now is 1500 people. Mm -hmm. So we're saying to our community, getting tested once per quarter is the culture we're trying to create within this community. At a minimum. At a minimum. Mm -hmm. So what usually happens when you have super experienced people and we're like, hey, turn your STI test, um, within the last, last 90 days, they're turning in tests from like last month. Yeah, you know, absolutely. Or two weeks ago. Mm -hmm. um, but then we have new couples where it's like, oh, well, we only hook up with each other. It's like, Great. okay. Go ahead and turn it in still. So it yeah. shouldn't be a problem, yeah. you know? Um, and, you know, we've, <laughs> we've found situations where it's like, oh, you guys only hooked up with each other. Well, she has this. Mm -hmm. You know, um, maybe that's a conversation that needs to happen. But the point is we can't just take your word for yeah. your celibacy or, you know, lack of um, intimacy. Um, so we want to make sure that we're creating a culture of not just testing, but um, – talking about testing openly and it being yeah. just this normal thing. Uh, our team will will have events where it's like, we'll put in the group chat, hey, we're all going to AHF on Thursday Cute. from at 2 p.m. Anybody want to meet up there and then get lunch? Yeah, you know? so we're, I want to come. Yeah, so we're there, <laughs> we're, we're hanging out, we're talking, you yeah. know, and it becomes like a so this socially acceptable and fun thing to do versus like, oh shit, now I got to get testing. I don't want anybody to see me here. I can't believe I'm here. Oh my God, what if I see somebody I know? Yeah. I love seeing people I know. Me too. At, at AHF or wherever I go get tested. Like, oh my God, what's going on? Like, let's catch up while we're in line, mm -hmm. you know? Yeah. And I think that there's so much stigma attached to SDIs that, you know, that's really why people are so afraid of this and that. And like all of that is all of the fear mongering that we all received growing up, which is, it was all bad information. Yeah. Having an STI is not an issue. Having an STI and not knowing about it and not caring for it is <laughs> yeah. the issue, but not having one, all, almost all of them can be resolved with medication. Well, and, and, and I would argue <clears throat> it's not so much you know, having the STI, it's how we communicate that we have the STI. Yeah. And on our side as, as an organization, where we can shift the culture is by how we receive the information that you have an STI. Yeah. And we're saying, hey, thank you so much for letting us know and keeping the community safe. Yeah. If you can get it figured out and retest it and send in some, you know, a, a clean test, we're happy Great. to have you. Great. Yeah. But it can't be like, oh my God, you can't come anymore. Like, no, 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 no. Thank you. Yeah. You know, we don't do like refunds on tickets or transfers, but sure. unless someone has an STI um, and they can't come to the party, then we're like, hey, thank you. We'll transfer your ticket to the next party. Yeah, you exactly. Know, because you're keeping us safe. Um, yeah. So now the other big difference then from us and other parties is that, you know, not only the STI test, there comes an interview as well. Yeah. <clears throat> so I know parties that do one of the two, mm -hmm. but when you do both, um, it gives people, look, we live in Los Angeles. Right. Um, this is literally the capital of like motion pictures and filters. It's like yes. what we do here. Um, so even though you're sending in this beautiful picture from your vacation when you were glowing and the, <laughs> the sun was hitting you perfectly and, you know, they got that right angle and, you know, that cute smile and it, everything worked out. Like we can't trust that, mm -hmm. you know, like let's how many people have been catfished? Oh my like God. Every single yeah. one of us has been catfished. Absolutely. So it's like, hey, let's just have a conversation. Now there's other times where people send in this super hot picture um, and we go to have the interview with them. And the interview is not so much like, hey, let's interview and see if you're right for this. It's like, let's see if you can hold a conversation. Yeah. If you're an interesting person. Mm -hmm. Because there's been so many times where we've interviewed people and like, oh my God, this woman is beautiful. And we interview her and- there's no back and forth. Mm. It's so so then it's like, okay, well, we're gonna put you into this super social, vulnerable environment. And if you can't have a conversation like this over video chat with your clothes on, well, then when you're in your lingerie in this new environment, mm -hmm. you're gonna be a wallflower, you know? Yeah. And you know, wallflowers are great, just not at play parties. Yeah. So um 
that's our goal is to not just, you know, see who the person is and make sure we're not being catfish, but also give a, people a chance for their personality to show. It's not so much about being hot. It's, are you interesting? Do you, are you enthusiastic about being here? Yeah. If are you a fuck yes to being in a space exactly. before fuck yes of touch or connection or anything like that? Are you a fuck yes to being here today? Am I trying to convince you to come to this amazing play right? party? Because no, that's not the energy. No, thank the energy you. has to start from a fuck yes. And I would say that regardless of what play party you're going to, be a fuck yes if you're going to go and do it. And if you are hesitant and you're not a fuck yes, <laughs> Don't go. Just well, don't go. Like, I mean, obviously look at stuff and, you know, work through stuff you need to work through, but like you want to come into any type of sexy sexual situation with that type of fuck yes energy mm -hmm. so that you can feel safe and expansive. And both parties being a fuck yes. And yes. this is why, you know, we do the interview as well is sometimes there's a couple there and maybe um, the woman is super excited to go to this play party, mm -hmm. but her partner has been quiet the whole time. And you can tell that he's been dragged to this, Yeah, you know? And so I'm, I'm trying to talk to him and he's like, yeah, I'm, I'm here. She wants to do it. It's like, oh no, 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 no. If it's not a fuck yes from both of you, because what ends up happening is that you go to the play party, she ends up having a good time. You're on the wall, you're in your feelings, you're feeling jealousy, and now an argument happens at the party. Yep. And that is the biggest vibe killer to watch a couple like argue about a boundary that was crossed um, because they didn't have that level of communication prior to entering the space. Yeah. So I think it's a good time to also point out that non-monogamy will not save your relationship. A play <sighs> party will not save your relationship. You have to be on solid ground both consenting excitedly, both in that fuck yes space to move forward with any type of non-monogamy or voyeurism or anything like that. So it's so important to remember that like, you're not going to save your relationship by going to a play party. You're going to ruin it because I think oftentimes it is like one person wants to and the other one doesn't, you know, there, there's so much relenting when it comes to non-monogamy, mm -hmm. whether it's in the beginning of a relationship and somebody is dating someone who is traditionally monogamous and mm -hmm. they're like, well, I'm just, I'm lonely. I'm horny. Like, this is fine. Who cares if he has a partner or whatever? I see a lot of relenting and, and the guys are over here like, well, I told her. And, and I'm saying guys, girls, because this is how I've seen it manifest of, mm -hmm. of single women dating polyamorous men and then having those monogamous behaviors, even though he did say what he was and what he was into, and then she relented. So we can never be in a situation of relenting. And that includes if you were a couple going to a play party, even if you don't plan to play with other people. Yes. And I do want to give war a warning to, to guys out there, you know, in relationships with another uh, woman who, you know, they want to go to a play party. It's like, okay, I want to hook up with someone else. So I'm ready to open up this marriage or relationship. Guys, your woman is going to get way more attention than you. Facts. Right? So you're going to open this thing up to be like, oh, man, I want to hook up with this other woman or try to hook up with other women. And you forget, like, when was the last time you flirted openly? Mm. Right? Like, when do you still have the game? Um, in the current society that we're in, women don't need as much game to be able to, you know, play. So, uh, I see so many times where guys like, oh man, baby, let's go to the play party. Let's go to the play party. And then your partner is a hit, yeah. you know, and everybody's trying to talk to her and you're like, well, uh, you're so mad because she's getting so much action and you're not getting any action. And you were the one that wanted to be in this space and you were the one that wanted to open the relationship. So just, you know, beware that when you open up this relationship, um, you may have to work harder than she does in order to have a non-monogamous situationship. Yeah. And I also want to uh, dig in a little bit to the game part of it. Like mm. you don't have to have game. And I think maybe you and I started talking about this earlier. Um, but like when we grew up, game was just coercion. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, it wasn't God. like it was the game that was like smooth or whatever oh. was manipulation. It wasn't actual connection. And so when we say like, guys, you don't need that much game anymore. Like you don't need coercion. You need to show up as yourself 
and be a good listener and, you know, stay in the conversation you're in and ask questions and, you know, yes, be, there's, be interesting. There's, <laughs> oh, this is, it's so tricky because I think growing up, um, we were all products of nonverbal consent. Yeah. Yeah. You know? And so you do the move at the movie theater where, you know, mm -hmm. you yawn and you put your arm around the girl and like, she may have given you all the signs potentially like that was okay. Or you've watched television and movies like, well, that's the move when mm. I'm, when I'm on a date, that's the move that I, that you're supposed to do. Yeah. Um, so I think in this space, in the non-monogamous space, we can't just put our arm around someone. No. We need to ask, hey, is it okay if I put my arm around you? And, um, you know, I was on a, a, another podcast where the host made a great point by asking for consent for an action. You allow that person to think about it twice. Mm -hmm. They get twice the experience when you ask for consent. It's the, you know, hey, can I put my arm around you? Then she thinks about, mm, what's mm. that feel like? What's that gonna be like? Oh my God, mm. I'm imagining him putting or her putting their arm around me. Um, and then you get the action of putting the arm around. So it's twice as juicy when we implement consent. Yeah, because we get to have that brief moment of fantasy. Mm -hmm. And that does help us integrate into play and, and get our imagination. It gets us out of all the bullshit that's running around in our heads and just clear space for the what ifs. Yeah. And like, what is that like? And that anticipation. I, I love that. It's so true. So the third thing that separates us from uh, the pack um, is our focus on art. Mm, yeah, right? I love that. There's play parties that have performances, um, but our performances are from our guest. Mm -hmm. So it creates a different dynamic when someone is like, well, hey, I have this fantasy that I want to experience at a play party. Um, you know, this ultimate form of exhibitionism. And so, you know, we've had couples, one of my favorite couples, they were like, hey, we want to do, um, how do we do sexy acro yoga? And I was like, oh, that's, yeah. that's a great performance. Like, easy do it naked yeah <laughs> you yeah. know and they were like well hey our boundary is keeping our bottoms on it's like oh great cool nude bottoms right mm -hmm. so um they ended up practicing two weeks leading up to the party to where their relationship dynamic you know um grew and had this really fun, interesting part of it. And they were telling me about the growth and how they practice and how it brought them closer and how the anticipation for the party um, was just so sexy for them. Um, and they were able to fantasize so much prior to performing. And then when they performed, we, you know, they picked the mute, their favorite song. Mm. They um, picked the lighting. They wanted to have like a kaleidoscope being shot uh. on them. So as they're Although they're naked, they both look like they're painted in this kaleidoscope. So their bodies are morph morphing and the kaleidoscope is morphing. Wow. And um, we used the projector and we added some uh, some fog to that because, you know, with a projector yeah. and fog, it just looks amazing. I was already thinking it's like projection mapping. If you've ever been to exactly. um, yeah. Crazy Horse in mm -hmm. Paris, they do projection mapping on bodies and it's just like, fuck yes. It's amazing. I love this. I love you know? it. It's like, oh, so, so They beautiful. don't feel as naked. Yeah. You know, and the cool part is that, you know, we're watching this performance happen and it's behind an infinity wall. So now you're watching these bodies morph, but now you're paying attention to the silhouettes of the moves that they're making. And you're watching them as they're making eye contact with each other, mm -hmm. just loving this. And you know, I think one time they slipped up and like, no one's like, oh my God, I can't believe they slipped up during their performance. Like, who cares? Yeah. This is a contribution to the space. We're holding space for someone's fantasy. Yes. Um, and it then makes that couple more approachable right? The point of doing the performance, you know, is um, threefold, where one, it's you're contributing to the space, mm -hmm. you know, um, two is you're giving something people to talk about. Yes. You know, an experience. Exactly. And, and three are the connections that you can make after right now you were the center of attention. Now people can come up to you and they have a conversation thing. You know, I always say the performances and the art that we create um, is the nuance to flirting. Mm. Right. Prior to the performances, we you know we're doing um, boundaries conversations, um, we're doing intimacy um, activities, we're having the consent talk. So all of these things are are us talking about ourselves, yeah. right? And then 
when we have the art, now we don't have to talk about ourselves. We have this thing that we all experienced. And it, it's like going to any event with someone where if you go to it and you're with a friend, it's like, man, we have this shared memory. So now yeah. we have something to talk about and it becomes so much easier. And um, my other saying is it gives you the ammunition to shoot your shot. Yes. Yeah, it does. And one thing I also really liked, um, which is, you know, great for sex full stop wherever you are. There was like such a, a long flow of the evening mm -hmm. and it really like it really helped you settle into your body and into the space and into the community. It very much felt community. Like it didn't, mm -hmm. it didn't feel like a party. It felt like I was walking into a room with friends. Mm -hmm. I just didn't know yet. And, well, the, the way we're creating that community is by giving everyone who arrives a shared experience. Mm -hmm. So now we all have experienced this one thing. It's like going to summer camp with people. It's like, okay, well, we're all in the pool together. You know, we all did these activities. Yeah. So now we're all friends. Yeah. So we're giving people that experience up front. So when it does become playtime, you have um, – content to talk about. You have mm. substance, excuse me, to talk about. And when you're experiencing art, there's no wrong perspective. So whether you liked it, loved it, made you feel a certain way, it was healing, whatever, you just have something to share that's authentic versus, hey, I like your hair. Right? Yeah. Like, you know, or I okay. love your outfit. Like, mm -hmm. oh my God, this is the normal conversation at play parties. Like, please like let's move away from complimenting someone's yeah just complimenting someone's looks like you know it's it is great to get a sure. compliment about your looks but like let's go a little bit deeper than that yeah you know? i mean that's why i really liked the uh setting of desires intentions and boundaries i mean i think anytime we can just like stop and set an intention even just for your sexual experiences at home with yourself with your partner with your partners to set an intention for your experience heightens the experience and mm -hmm. brings like a different level of awareness. And it's also really nice to reflect afterwards. How did that, how did that go? How yeah. did that, in, like, where are you with your intention? Do you feel like you met yourself where you were at with your intention? Do you feel like, uh, you, there's something that was missing from that? Like, and if so, why, what happened? Like it, it just gets our, it gets us thinking in a different way. Yeah. And I guess to give your listeners context, you know, when we start off our party um, at 8 p.m. to 10 p.m. is our happy hour time, mm. right? So you get in and um, we have three rules for when you enter the space. No phones, no money, no hierarchy. These are things when we were creating this experience, like what don't we like about society? Mm. What segregates us? <laughs> yeah. You know, like these things do. So like let's take away your phone so you can't escape to your phone. Yeah. How many events do you go to? It's like, oh my God, this is boring. Or like I'm feeling awkward, like I'm just going to be here now. Mm -hmm. um, and then, you know, the money aspect of it, like, First off, we just don't want you touching money than touching genitals. Yeah. It's like, let's, so dirty. We learned a lot from COVID, yeah. you know? So, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and then also just the individual, it's like, oh, hey, look at this big tip. I'm going to give the bartender. I'm the money no, person. No, like, no, no, no. Please stop. Let's not. Um, and then the no hierarchy. There is no VIP. Mm. Um, and to be honest, you know, the, the parties that have VIP, usually you don't want to be in the VIP, no. you know, depending on the the space so we just want everyone to there, there's no space that i can go into that you can't go into yeah you know yeah um so during that eight to ten time we have to give people the tools to be able to be successful in this environment because this isn't the bar this isn't um a festival it's you have to know the language in order to be successful in this environment right so um we tell you the first conversation that you should be having with people when you're introducing yourself are, hey, my name's Michael. What are your boundaries? Yeah. Right? So we're having that boundaries conversation from the jump. Um, and that is kind of, you know, and, and then we'll also have activities and stuff at mm -hmm. our, one of my favorites was at our um, alien disco um, a few months ago where we had butt plug ring toss. Oh, I saw the photos saw of that. That looks so fun. <laughs> It was a vibe. But it's like, you I know, play. I met Michelle at, at a butt plug ring toss, you know, yeah. uh, back in December, you know, so we kind of have this funny story. But but during that time, we're encouraging you to talk about your boundaries. Mm -hmm. So then we move on to the consent talk. OK, so here is how we um, discuss consent. How do I receive a no? Mm -hmm. How do what does a yes feel like? Yeah. You know, um, what about voyeurism? How close is too close? You yeah. Know? Um, and after I love COVID that, that part, like adding the voyeurism piece of oh, it man. because people don't, 
really know how to watch in a respective exactly. way. Exactly. And I, so, you know, I am lucky uh, to be married to this beautiful woman. Gorgeous, and truly gorgeous. when we hooked up at play parties, it it's sexy, mm -hmm. you know? Oh, yeah. And what would happen is like, you know, we get, you know, a little bit of a crowd around us. Yeah. And for me, I'm not the big exhibitionist. Mm -hmm. um, and so once I feel your energy, if you're this close and I'm hooking up, it's like, yeah, you're not touching me. So it's not really breaking my consent, but I just, I'm feeling you right now. Oh you yeah. Know? I've had situations and, too, where like, I've been like receiving oral and like, I have people like right here. It's <laughs> like, that's very close, starting sir. Starting to feel like a threesome, <laughs> you know? Yeah, 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 <laughs> so, yeah, yeah exactly. Um, so we talk about, you know, if you want to be a voyeur, um, we use the COVID rule. If you're within six feet, yeah. you need to ask, is it okay if I watch, mm -hmm. right? So we're giving you these tools at the beginning to be successful in this space. Then we go into that intimacy exercise. Now with the intimacy exercise, we're going to have you eye gaze with three or four strangers. We talked about that earlier. Um, but on that fourth person, this was a big one that we created, I believe a year or maybe two years ago, but exchange your dibs your desires, intentions, and boundaries. Yeah. Um, and it was an acronym we just came up with out of, out of nowhere. But we're like, these are the things that need to be shared. Because we were going to say your bids, which is boundaries, intention, desires. But it's like- You can't mm, start that way, though. Don't want to bid on people, yeah, you know? But yeah, like, you don't want to bid on people. And starting with boundaries is a very hard place to start. Exactly. But we want to start, start with fun. Easy, yes, easy exactly. Desires. Hey, this is what I desire tonight. Let's go a little bit deeper. What's your intention yeah. here? And let's get serious. Like really, what are your boundaries? Exactly. <laughs> yeah, so yeah, I love that journey. Part of us doing the exercise of saying your desire, right? It is speaking your desire into existence. Mm -hmm. So Ariel, if you're like, hey, I desire to be tied up. Mm -hmm. I can be like, ooh, I'm not the Shabari guy, yeah. right? But I know the Shabari guy mm -hmm. or I saw the Shabari guy. Let me point you in the right direction. So you have like this person colluding with you for your yeah. desire. To Again, control. collaboration, yeah, exactly. right? Like it, com it all comes back to collaboration. Yep. I shouldn't say collude. It's it's a negative term. Um, but <laughs> point we replaced is, it. <laughs> yeah. But point is, is like, you know, you are speaking into existence a desire to at least one person saying yeah. it out loud. And we all know the power of just saying things out loud. Um, intentions is, you know, pretty straightforward. And then we end it with boundaries because maybe you got to the party at 930. Mm -hmm. So you didn't get a chance to have that boundaries conversation with everyone else. Or maybe you got there early and just conversations never led there. Mm -hmm. No matter what, in this space, we are going to make sure that you vocalize your boundary to at least one person. Yes. And what I find, and, and you know, when you went to the play, you you were overwhelmed, I'm sure, at first. Like, whoa, there is a lot mm -hmm. going on right now, yeah. right? And when all of those things are happening and your senses are going crazy, and especially for first timers, you know, um, saying that boundary can ground you back mm -hmm. into the space. Being like, okay, this is all fun, but wait, 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 wait. With me and my partner, we discussed this. Like, I, I was imagining doing X, Y, Z, but no, 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 no. Here are my boundaries. Yeah. And let's move forward. Now, can those boundaries adjust? Sure, they can, but. Let's make sure that we are starting by at least stating a few hard boundaries. And for the most part, many people are not used to having the experience of stating a boundary at all. Exactly. So for a lot of people coming into that space, that may be the first time that they have ever been asked about a boundary or spoken that boundary out loud. Yep. And that's why during the interview, we talk, we ask them, hey, what is your boundary? Yeah. So sometimes we'll get new couples where they're like, hey, uh, we don't have any boundaries. It's like, oh. Mm, but you do. Okay. So you're okay with another man sticking his fist in your rectum? I'm like, whoa, whoa, no, no, no. That's a boundary. Like, exactly. Yeah. So you have to think like maybe in your world, um, you haven't you don't really understand the scope of of this kink space that yeah. you're getting yourself yeah. into, right? Or what's um, possible? Uh, yeah, like oh no, I do all positions. Like yeah, but there's. But I don't think you know what all. Yeah, are, all my the, yeah, exactly. There exactly. are things a... that you can't even imagine. Ooh. So, <laughs> um, an exercise I have people do when they say, "Oh, I don't," you know, we don't have any boundaries. You know, uh, I tell them a few obvious ones that I think they may have. Yeah. Right? Um, and the exercise, like. What I want you guys to do prior to attending is both of you in another room, write down your boundaries, you know, write them down separately and then come together to see where they align. Love that. Yeah. Right? To where you're not being influenced by your partner because mm -hmm. in relationships, you know, yeah. one person can be more influential. It's like, oh yeah, I guess that's our boundary, babe. Like, yeah. Hmm, I mean, that's why intimacy coordinating, I speak to actors separately because exactly. I'm not. And a lot of times with men, they will say whatever she wants. And I'm like, no, no. Mm -mm. 
that's a separate conversation that I have with her. Yep. I'm here for you and you are allowed to have boundaries. It, if you don't want to take your shirt off, we don't have to take your shirt off, and, but and you can have boundaries too. That's where a lot of discovery comes as mm -hmm. well. It's like, well, I didn't, I didn't know that was ever a boundary. That's a boundary. You don't, you don't want me kissing other men? Oh, like, I didn't know. Yeah. Oh, I thought that was cool. Like, yeah. wait, so you're okay if I suck their dick, but I can't kiss them? Mm -hmm. Exactly. Yeah. Like, oh, wow. And most huh. people are not used to having those relationship check-ins and those boundary conversations, which is, again, why I really love these types of processes because it's helping people learn that, like, this is a good conversation to have. These are good practices to have regardless of the space that you're in. It's mm -hmm. like have your monthly relationship check-in in, in yeah. a low stakes, go to dinner, whatever, maybe make a picnic outside and just have your check-ins. Yep. What are your desires this month? Mm -hmm. How did the last month go? Yep. What are your intentions for the month moving forward? Is there anything that I can do to help you get more pleasure in your life? Is yeah. there anything that I can do to make something more palpable? Is there something that you're struggling with? What are your boundaries? And like yeah. make that a practice. And you know, to speak to maybe your more intermediate or advanced listeners who have been to a lot of play parties where mm. it's like, well, I don't really have any boundaries. Maybe um, you do. <laughs> you do, but one of the things um, I, I tell the more advanced individuals is when you get to the party, since you guys already know each other's boundaries, um, figure out who the no's are. Mm -hmm. right? Yeah. Oh, that's Go good. Go around yeah, the yeah, party yeah. and be like, you know what? Mm -mm. Like I'm, I'm okay with you hooking up with anybody. A lot of couples, when they get to this point, it's like, look, if you like them, go for it. Go for it. Yeah. But some people just give you a weird feeling. Like, yeah. I don't like the way she's looking at you. I, got I don't the, like the I way got the ick. I got the ick <laughs> on that person. So look, everybody is up for grabs except for those two. Yeah. I just don't want you playing with those two. So now it's like you can do all this advanced stuff. You mm -hmm. just know. All right, let me avoid those. Yeah. Individuals. And thank you for the glyph gift of clarity. Like yeah. that's, that's a really big one. And so for me being somebody that is like way deep in the boundary conversations mm -hmm. and all of that, uh, it is very hard for me to say, I, you know, like this is a boundary or that is, is a boundary. And so that is what I said. And I said, uh, to the person who I ultimately wound up playing with all night mm -hmm. long. Um, the two things I said was like, you know, I, I usually don't play with people at play parties, but I don't want to put a boundary on that. So I'm not going to, I'm just going to say that that's usually what happens. Uh, maybe penetration, but I don't want to put a boundary on that because the reality is that, and also we did. Um, but the reality of that is that for me at the advanced level that I am, I have a deep understanding that every single boundary for the most part is contextual. Yes. And, and I think it's also, you know, um, yes. And building on that is boundaries evolve, right? Yeah. And having space for the evolution of boundaries, especially as a as a single, you can come in saying, like like you said, like I've I've had so many singles, you know, first timers was like, I'm gonna come in, I'm just not gonna play with anybody. It's like, okay. Okay, just see. Cool. You yeah. know, um, and then that night they end up hooking up with like five or six people. Yeah. You know? So being open for your boundaries evolving. But if you're in a partnership, um, being able to pull your partner away saying, hey, look, I know we talked about this, but you, I've been really connecting with this individual. Are you open to us adjusting this yeah. boundary? And I've seen a boundaries adjust so many times. So, um, you know, understanding, yes, you can have a boundary, but also leaving space for, um, you know, the evolution of a boundary because no, nothing is is finite, right? Well, and it, it shifts either way. Yeah. You could also be in a situation, which does happen a lot, mm -hmm. where you're like, you know what? I thought I was comfortable with you going down on another person, but now that we're here, I don't think I like that, mm -hmm. you mm -hmm. know? And your boundaries are allowed to change. That comes back to consent is, is flowing and it's moving and it is an ongoing conversation. Yep. It's not just at the beginning of an experience or even in the middle of an experience. Yep. It's just, again, even it's consent that to ongoing. penetration and mm -hmm. during penetration, you'd be like, you know what? I am not comfortable with this. Hey, not feeling it. Totally fine. It's, yeah. it's retractable. Yeah. Um, so after that boundaries conversation, um, you know, for the dibs, then we go into the performances. And, you know, as I was saying before, this is really just to give you that, that, um, you know, you're, you're going to a show. Yeah. Cause it, it, yeah, yeah. it takes the pressure off the sex. Definitely. Right? So like, if you just stayed for the first four hours, you got to have this awesome connection, icebreaker activity. Oh, with a show, you know, like, all right, great. But that really helps you ease into the space. And then the next four hours are 
play party. And, and that's kind of the other part of this is that we created this experience. It grew to be an eight hour experience because mm. we saw how much time it takes for people to drop in. A lot of play parties are four hours, yeah. right? You get there at 10, you're leaving at two. Yep. Um, it's, it's, it's short and it doesn't give that, uh, it doesn't cultivate the eroticism and that's all the foreplay. Foreplay no. is not oral and digital sex, which is fingers. N none of that is foreplay. Nope. I, Kissing on a titty ain't foreplay, okay? That's the sex. But all of these other activities of connection, of sinking in, of being present, of touching in on your body, all of those things are the foreplay. Yes. And what we love is a little anticipation, mm. right? Anticipation where you've, you saw that person right when they arrived and like, mm, I almost did the eye contact, you know, the eye um, gazing with them, but I missed them. But yeah. then we stared across the room during the performances and then you finally get the chance to talk to them. And what we see is that we don't have as many consent issues and boundaries being crossed because of the anticipation that's building up. Yeah. Where, look, we've been looking at each other for, yeah. you know, four hours now. It's clearly a fuck yes for both of us. Mm -hmm. So when it's playtime, when you go up to that person, it's not, you're not asking a, a question with, um, an unknown answer. Yeah. You, know, you read the context clue. And it was like, hey, do you want to play? Like, I thought you'd never ask. You yeah. Know? So it, and you it, wanted to get to that point too. Yes. And, and you want to, you know, the other part of this um, is that you want to get to the point where, yes, you played. And then what happens after the play? Mm. Right. And the beauty of, you know, the, the play uh, or, or play parties from what I've experienced over the years that it's not so much about the sex, but it's more about the pillow talk. Mm, yeah. Because when we go to a bar, a festival, a club, all we, when we go to all of these different places, it's not so much to like, oh, I like, I like the way alcohol tastes, so I want to go to the bar. No, you're hoping to go to the bar and have a really good conversation with yeah. someone. You Which know? is why I hate bars because you can't hear anybody. <laughs> exactly. You know, you're just, I mean, oh, this is why we yeah. create the experience the way we do. And I, I tell the DJs at the experience, like, you know, this isn't about your beat drop. Mm -mm. You are here to create a vibe and to like keep this steady vibe going. I don't need your set where it's like get everybody up and dance. I no. don't I don't want everybody dancing in here. It's not a dance party. Yeah. Right. So yeah. understand that like you're here to to set a mood, um, not to control the crowd with the beat, yeah. right? Like yeah. the conversation should be controlling the crowd. Um, the performances, the um, activities, these are the things that are going to create connection, not not the music. That's not the point at yeah. this space. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. Uh, and you can feel that. And also I was I was hand fed cookies. <laughs> we came up, we came upstairs after like pillow talk for like, God knows what, how long, whatever vortex and like came upstairs and they were making more cookies. And I'm like dancing or whatever with this like cool light thing. And then when the cookies were ready, he came up to me and he was hand feeding me cookies while I was dancing. And it was like, Oh my God. Yeah. So good. So, so good. um, one of the individuals on my team, I don't, I don't know if she's okay with me saying her name, but she does the food and beverage and, you know, we're doing the Tantra event and every, every event will, there's some staples that we have, you know, like my, my wife is French. So we have to go to the best bakery in LA and get like these certain baguettes and French butter. And it's always a hit. Um, and we'll get fruit as well. We've also learned, you know, if you host play parties, here's a little nugget. Stick with fruit. Yep. Right. Yeah. Stick with bread, have maybe a gluten-free option. Mm -hmm. um, when you go down the vegetable route, or the meats route, yeah. you know, there's vegans that don't want to kiss someone that's just eating some salami. So they mm -hmm. may like you, but then they kiss you and it's like, okay, this is it's outside of my diet. Yes, stinky. exactly. The cheese makes your breast stink. Yeah. Also, the cheese, we all know what happens when you eat cheese. You're going to get a little gassy. That's right. Nobody wants that. So we, we've we learned the lessons of like, okay, here's the right food. So this one, I was like, oh my God. I mean, you know, this is a Tantra event. It's a little woo-woo. Um, what kind of random treat can we get people that speaks to it? And I was like, oh, should we just get like a, I don't know, a big old bowl of almonds? Like everybody likes almonds, right? And um, we were going back and forth. And I'm not sure who said it. You know, I'm going to say she said it. She's like, what if we did cookies? I was oh, like, oh, it was the God. fucking best to emerge Fuck out yes. of the dungeon to be like, are those fresh baked cookies? I'm fucking famished. Now, here's the <laughs> kicker. So I told her, I was like, fine. I was like, I want one like non- woo woo snack like give me like yeah. pillsbury easy bake <clears throat> toll house cookies and so she's like 
fuck, Mike, I, I got the cookies. I just couldn't find the, uh, you know, the Pillsbury ones. I was like, oh my God, well, like, what'd you get? She's like, oh, I got these vegan cookies. I was like, huh, we'll see. You know, um, but there turns out this it's this brand, um, Laurel. Laurels, yeah, I I eat those. They're oh, great! My they're fucking, fucking god! And also because they're vegan, you can eat them raw. Like Laurels, if you guys so want to sponsor the play, yeah, we, do it. We will, whatever, we'll pay you, okay? Because these cookies, I think we got forty eight cookies, like four batches of twelve, and um, we were just like, you know, we when I baked the first one, I was like, man, let's see how they taste. I ate it. I was like, "Oh Holy my god, shit. so good. this is fucking amazing!" Yeah. So, um, you know, she would bake them, put them on a plate, and then I was just going around with yeah. cookies. Now, here was the real like mind fuck of the cookies, right? When we were talking about it, because I was like, "Look," she's like, "How many? How many people are coming?" She's like, "There's like a hundred people coming. Do we need to get a hundred cookies?" I'm like, "No, no, no, no. Let's get like." you know, three or four packs, right? Because some people are just not going to want to eat. Yeah. But it's not about eating the cookie. It's about the house smelling like cookies. Yes. Yes. No one, I don't care what your diet is, doesn't like just no, it was cookies so... in the house. Smells like fucking Christmas morning. And at know? the end of the night too, like when you've had, in my case, several sexual experiences with the same person, but like mm. we were on like this long journey and like we were just like dreamy coming upstairs and whatever. And it was just like, oh, wow. Yeah, I mean, people were like, "Is that? Are you baking are fucking, fucking cookies?" cookies? <laughs> like, that's exactly what I said. I was like, right. "Do I smell fucking cookies right now?" Oh my god, it was, it was so good. My absolute pleasure when you know, I, I love having these surprises. Like, is that a snake pit? Yeah. You know, we had a snake pit oh my god, like, I love the snakes. Are those fucking snakes? You mean I can roll around with the snakes? Like, yes, yes. you can. Um, but in my 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 favorite jokes with the snakes because we've had them before, but like, there's like a thin line between like being sexy with snakes and then bestiality. And we yeah. teeter that line. Um, so PETA, don't come for me. No snakes were fucked in the experience. Um, but with the cookies, it's it's just one of those things where also this place at 3 a.m. may have a sex smell to it. And it's it's not a bad smell, but it is a sex but it's smell. But it's a sexy, it's a sex smell. Maybe we cover it up with cookies. Smart. Um, so just going around to people and like, you know, while they're hooking up, I'd just go by and I was like, hey, is it cool if I watch? I'm like, yeah, yeah, no, no, it's fine. And I'm like, is it cool I offer you freshly baked cookies? And yes. Like, Stop fucking like, what did you just say? <laughs> like, you heard me correctly. He's like, oh my God, my hands. I was like, don't worry. Here, let me let me feed you a little cookie. Ugh. Uh, Ugh. Oh I'm my like, God. Oh my God. This is the best party ever. Like, yeah, because of the fucking cookies. So the cookies, fucking cookies. Like, cookies that are was gonna be a thing. the icing on the fucking cake. Yeah. Cause also, uh, one of the people that had like this cool light thing that I definitely need to get one of. Oh, the light whip. Yeah, the light whip. That's yeah. what it was called. I need a light whip. It was amazing. Yeah. But like, I, I got my hands on one. So I'm like dancing and I love, I love to dance. Yeah. And so like, I had like a whole, upstairs I had like a whole dance floor to myself and then like he just comes over and starts like just feeding me this cookie and I'm like this is the fucking greatest moment of my life <laughs> yeah the cookies the cookies will be back uh, we're gonna you know I, I don't know if we're gonna I, I would love to just keep doing cookies it was our first time doing Do the it cookies and, you know before we've had muffins you know like we'll get but those some, are like, like you exactly. know, like those it's are a little, little hard. Exactly. Yeah. And the cookies exactly. were like, it was like melting in my mouth and it was crumbling. And I was just like, like, oh, breathing men. The oh, hardest part so about the cookies is just remembering to bake the cookies. You get so like mm. in the vibe of like, oh man, this is such a great party. And then like, there was a part at like 2 a.m. where me and that individual look at each other and was like, the cookies. The cookies. <laughs> the fucking cookies. Let's go. Let's <laughs> yeah, exactly. Cookies. Like, let's heat up the oven. So we're just like in the house, like, how do we even work the oven? You know, yeah, so we yeah, figured, yeah. We figured it out. <laughs> what is the just, oven in this house? Yeah, I don't know if the cookies were complete. Oh, my favorite part about the cookies, though, there was this one woman who, um, a friend of mine, I, I offered you know a cookie to, and she's like, "Oh no, I'm I'm gluten free." I was like, "Oh, they're gluten free. They're gluten free right? and vegan." And she then she's like, "Oh well, no, I don't do soy or lactose." And I was like, "Oh fuck, but they I don't have any of that know shit." They were vegan at the time. Mm -hmm. She's like, "Fuck, they're nut free, like, you know soy what? free." Let me go ask again. You know, so I went up to the woman. I was like. Are, are there any lactose? She's like, no, the cookies are fucking vegan. Everybody can eat them. I was like, give me another plate. Yeah. And so I went back to her. She's like, you want a cookie? She's like, no, no, I told you. I was like, they're you vegan. She's it. like, no way. And I was like, and they're hot. Mm, yes, yes, yes. 
Oh my God. Okay. We've gotten so far in this episode. It's like done. And I haven't even <laughs> asked you yet, which I said sometimes happens. Where did you grow up? Um, I grew up here in Los Angeles. You did? Yes, I'm a Los Angeles native, um, you know, raised here. My, I come from a Los Angeles family. You know, my grandfather was like one of the first black sheriffs in wow. Los Angeles. Yeah. My mom, um, you know, grew up out here as well. Just Los Angeles. I am a Los Angeles native. Wow. Through, through and through. And, and so that's really why I implemented the interview process mm -hmm. because I know how to sift through these Angelinos, yeah. right? Like who's, who's here to really be a part of this experience and like really like enjoy LA or who's here just like trying to like find their way in LA and, and trying to figure it out. And, you know, I'm this, you're this implant that just wants to kind of have taker energy. Yeah. Like get famous and go home. Exactly. That taker energy. I cannot. So I cannot. That's what we're really sorting through. And, and that's why I try to have other Angelinos a part of the interview process to yeah. know, like, hey, like, who's just like wants to be in Los Angeles? Not like, oh, I want to show up at the play and be mm. so cool and I'll have the sexiest outfit, but I won't talk to anybody because I'm like, blah, blah. Ugh. No, no, it's, it's 100,000% not that energy. So, what do you actually remember from your sex education growing up? Did you go to a private school or a? I went to a public school. Okay. Um, yeah, that and, was the word I meant to use. <laughs> yeah, I went to a public school and I remember seventh grade, um, my seventh grade science teacher, maybe it was my sixth, my sixth grade science teacher. Yeah. Okay. So the memory that stands out, and I mean, she did this to burn it into our heads, but it was like of childbirth. Like, yes, I learned about, you know, the, how the sperm goes to the egg and all this, but she does the childbirth video and it's like, yo... Just witnessing childbirth is just amazing in itself, right? Yeah. So we're like, oh my God, that's how it happens, right? So we do that and we're like, wow, that was pretty cool. She's like, now you want to see something cool? Then she rewinds it and it's like, and I was like oh my God. <laughs> All I remember is putting a baby back into a vagina from sex education and being like, whoa, like that is going to stick with me. She was like, oh my God. Yeah, you guys ready to be scarred for life? And we're like, what do you mean? What do you she mean? Just, and you know, back then it's like you know, uh, you know, re rewind on a on a VCR. Yeah, so you get yeah, to, like, yeah. You see could it see all. everything. Like, oh, oh my, my god! god. So, yeah, and that's jumps. how you got a vagina vacuum king. Yeah, I was like, <laughs> yeah, <exactly. laughs> that's that's where my tentacle porn comes in. Yeah, oh, yeah, exactly. You know? Oh my god, that's hilarious. Yeah. Well, she had a good sense of humor. No, it was it was hilarious, and you know, I, I think um, because we were you know growing up in Los Angeles, it's definitely like one of the more liberal places so mm -hmm. we had sex education from like i want to say you know fifth grade was what the first sex education so it was like fifth sixth seventh and eighth grade was all sex education so um it was it was cool but i didn't you know i didn't have sex until i was 17 um between it was the summer between my sophomore and junior year of high school cute yeah summer love summer oh, summer was, fling i had this car it was a 86 acura legend fuck yeah yep, i remember was, that yep it was the first automatic was it one of the acura white ones blues blue okay i feel like yeah. most of those were like that cream color you yeah know what I mean? exactly it was creamy <laughs> blue color um and it was the first automatic car Acura had ever made. Wow. So like just getting on the freeway was so dangerous because I'm like pedal to the metal and we're like yeah. 10, 15, 20. Oh you know, my and I'm God, just like, this is so um, So yeah, I was in the back of that car. We lost our virginity to each other. And um, if I had to do it again, I would I would change the position, you know, because it was like, okay, I just sit down and like you just get on top. And it yeah. was just like trying to break a hymen by someone sitting on a penis is just which you can't break by the way because it's already gone yeah i, I you know <laughs> i don't know how to look again i didn't know what i was doing yeah. but it was just so hard to get into i was like is this really what it's like like oh this feels like she's crying i'm in pain too this is just so awkward um but you know after a while and you learn more and and i think you know with everyone's sex education, it's it's um not trial by fire. That's a terrible way of saying that. But but it, but it, it feels like that because especially if you're a person with a vulva, most of it is fucking painful. So yeah, it is a trial by yeah. fire. So it was it was definitely just like experience and um yeah, and, and it takes con you're not confident 
after the first time, Mm -mm. you know? So it took me hooking up with like a grown woman the next summer in Jamaica. Ooh. Yeah. She was, she was 23. I was 18. And uh, when we had sex, I was like, oh, that's sex. Like, this is what everybody's talking about. Yeah. Okay, I get it. I totally get it. Um, <laughs> so, so that's what people like. Yeah, yeah. no, this is, this is fucking great. Yeah. Um, but yeah, that did, oh, that woman changed my life. It, it just did so much for my confidence because uh, I, I saw her when she was getting on the plane. And, you know, I'm 18, so I just see like a grown woman, yeah. you know, 23. I'm like, oh, my God, she's beautiful. But mm-hmm. like clearly out of my league you totally. know and then we're going to jamaica and like okay well we get off we we're, you know we get off in jamaica we go to the same um we end up at the same resort i'm like oh my god what are the chances yeah what are the fucking chances wow. here yeah and then she's in the jacuzzi with like her sister and her cousin and her cousin's like 19 which is like more my age her sister's like 25 and she's 23 and i, I told my little sister i was like yo go in the jacuzzi she's like why i was like get Just in the go. fucking jacuzzi <laughs> you know <laughs> Such brother <laughs> energy. Yeah, like, she's like, okay, fine. It's like getting the jacuzzi. She's like, yo, where have you been? I didn't know you were in the jacuzzi. She's like, what are you talking about? <laughs> you just about? told me to get here. Like, yeah. And it's like, oh my God, who's this? Is this your brother? He's so cute. And then like just ended up um, – she gave me this thing was like, do you smoke? And I, I just started like smoking weed like, you know, that summer. I was like, yeah, I smoke, you know. Yeah. And just – had this really amazing, you know, sex all over the beach and in the jacuzzi and all all the wow. places. And I just remember, you know, when you're younger, back to what we were saying with like the consent, right? Like I didn't have the tools to know that I should just ask her for a kiss. Yeah. So we were just- in That was the, not the norm then. Yeah, like she, how would you know? She was just in the jacuzzi. I was like, like this in the jacuzzi uh, and then she had like baller. her hands here and she was like kind of going in and out and I was like, fuck, like she's giving me all the signs. Like every sign I feel like she's giving me, but like, do I go in for the kiss? And then I just remember, I was like, man, you're going to go back to high school and what are you going to tell your friends? You know, <laughs> are you going to tell them this whole situation, how you hung out with her and you guys smoked and you're on the beach and you're going to tell them that like you didn't go in for the kiss, you know? Yeah. So I was like, just go in. And I was like, all right, here we go. Suck. Exactly. And like, this is this, you know, so many guys have to go through that nervous mm. energy of like making that first move Yeah. when now I, I know what I know. You take all the nervous energy by just asking, hey, is it cool if I kiss you? Yeah. You know, that is my move at the party where like, okay, I'm getting some vibes. Sometimes, you know, there's a lot of nervous energy. Maybe I'm not getting the eye or whatever. But now I just ask like, hey, is it cool if I kiss you? And that's you know? so fucking hot. Yeah. It's and- so fucking hot. I have I have definitely – this was at a different play party, but I was talking to this guy for like, a, you know, a couple hours at this point, but like whatever. I wasn't attracted to him or anything like that. Yeah. After talking to him for like two hours, he was like, hey, can I kiss you? And I was like, yeah, you fucking can. And then he gave me a great orgasm. <laughs> like, no, you know, and, and it's like. I do want to warn guys out ask. there. There's, um, you know, I have had, you know, um, a consent issue in the past, Mm -hmm. you know, um, with a person who communicated to me, they prefer nonverbal consent. Mm -hmm. And so I picked up on all the signs. She gave me all the signs, you know, and, you know, I went in to, you know, touch her butt, you know, and I touched it and, you know, we ended up making out a bunch of times. We ended up hooking up, but later on, she's like, you know what? I fawned in that moment. Mm. And Looking back, I don't know if I was comfortable with you touching my butt. I was comfortable with the kissing and everything else, but I fawned in that moment. And I was like, damn, I should have stuck to my guns. Yeah. Of like, yeah. you know what? Because we had this argument, you know, and she is a sex expert, you know, like she's, I don't want to say her name, but she's, she's top of the game. And um, it was one of those things where like our argument was like, hey, we're, we're just coming off the Me Too era. Why would I trust anybody's not you know non-verbal yeah. consent like i mm-hmm. just have to have these checks and balances you understand what position this puts guys in if we start doing that yeah and she's we like, can't no. go back to guessing exactly and so that is you know one lesson that i learned from you know um from breaking someone's consent you know they fawned and, and that's also something that i learned about you know there's fight flight fawn and freeze mm-hmm. and so understanding that hey look regardless if you're getting these nonverbal cues just just ask you know, just ask. And that was a big, you know, I'm 
I may be a leader in this space, but I'm still a human and yeah. I make mistakes. And, you know, I did a lot of repair with that person after, you know, because for me, I'm, I'm in this for friendship, right? Like if, if we don't leave this experience being friends um, and we played, then what did we actually what do? What did we achieve? Right? Yeah, what's, what's like going on? Take your energy. Mm, yeah, you know? yeah. And so transaction. Yeah, and so it it took it it took me. You know, like one when it comes to repair, someone has to be open to repair. Repair is so important. Right? We talked so much about that when we when you and I chatted because yeah. it's such it's such an important topic that we yeah. don't see enough of. Ex- exactly. So it was one of those because it was very confusing to me. Where you know, hey, I, you know. I, yes, I did touch your butt, but then I asked to kiss you, you know, mm-hmm. and you said yes. And then we kissed again. Yeah. And then the next day, you know, we we played and it was, you know, it was great. And all that was consensual. But that one thing, yeah. you know, um, she went back to and, you know, the the lesson that I learned that she had, she had communicated to me that someone had touched her in the past, um, not like sexually, but just without her consent. Yeah. And it was super triggering when she gets touched without consent. Yeah. So well, it that's was where like, the boundaries comes in. Like if you had known that she had a boundary around that area, you wouldn't have touched that area. A hundred percent. And it was also just the conversation that we had mm-hmm. where it was like, whoa, so you're giving me, we had the non, you know, the, the nonverbal consent conversation. Well, and here's what I want to offer that you know? too. If you are a person who prefers nonverbal consent, then you need to come up with those explicit markers for what that looks like. Well, she explained them to me and I thought I got all of them. You know, it's like, it's eye contact. It's touching. No, 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 no. Is that not I, it? No. Yeah. I mean an actual, I will tap on your shoulders three times mm, or I will oh my give God, you that'd this been super helpful. hand signal. I will give you like very explicit. We can still use the same principles of consent communication and we can do it non-verbally if they are explicitly outlined and if the way that the request is going to come is explicitly outlined. Mm. Like if I, let's say I want to uh, practice non-verbal consent with you and I want to ask to kiss you, maybe beforehand we decided if I want to touch you in a certain area, I will hover that over that area and tap three times over Mm. that area. And if you are down for that, rub my shoulder three times. Oh my God. This, and if you don't want that, tap my shoulder. That's That would have been so helpful. These are still ways that we can use communication, consent forward communication, where if you, if you don't want words involved, okay, it's going to take a lot more front loading. Mm-hmm. You're going to have to do a lot more heavy lifting on exactly how you're going to be asking for the things that you want. But if both parties feel very clear on exactly how the request will be made and exactly how it will be responded mm-hmm. to, then we have the opportunity to play with nonverbal mm-hmm. consent. But it still has to have the boundaries of clarity and con- and and how are we going to communicate what I want and how you feel about what I want. Yeah, and... and- <clears throat> I think also when we talk about past repair, you know, um, because of that situation, I think I was super defensive of, Mm -hmm. of, you know, Hey, here's all the things like you had touched my face before. And you told me all these things and you touched my chest and my abs. And for me, these are sexual areas. They may be androgynous to you, but for me, those are pretty sexual. Um, but you know, I didn't respond well to, you know, that fawning moment. And it took me time to digest and to have conversations with people in my community to figure out what is the right approach to start having a, um, a repair conversation. And my wife was super supportive and helpful in that, you know? Um, and it, it got to the point where we were able to have that conversation and to start repairing. Um, and repair can take can take a long time. Yeah, might take you know? years. So That's there's fine. been times where, you know, I came out of a, a mushroom journey and was just being like, you know what, I need to give her a call again because it really spoke to me. And like, you know, being like, hey, I, I'm st- I'm still very sorry about this, but I want you to know what, what really hurts me is that me and you shared an intimate moment and you didn't walk away feeling good. Mm-hmm. And that is what I'm truly sorry for. And I'm mm-hmm. sorry if I, if I hurt you. Um, and you know, she was, you know, receptive to that. Um, but I still believe 
I'll feel even better about this when I see her again face to face to just say, Hey, you know, cause, cause doing stuff over the phone or over video chat, it's, it, it's okay. But those face to face conversations, because it's not so much about, you know, the words that we use, it's the full aspect of communication where it's body language, eye contact, tone, uh, and presence. Yeah. So I'm, I'm looking forward to continuing that repair. And, and I want to, you know, tell people that are out there who, um, especially guys, cause you know, we're making, we're coming from a patriarchy that's toxic, right? That's what we were raised in. So to enter in this non-monogamous space, we are, we have to understand that we're in a patriarchy to make sure that we're carving out space and um, healing for the matriarchy and what the right approach is. And we may not know the right approach because it's not outlined in this patriarchy. So, um, you know, guys out there, you're going to make mistakes. You know, that's that's kind of how this society has been set up and, and the, what's, what's created this toxic masculinity. It's being open to feedback. Um, it's having a community to support you. Um, it's having, it's, it's being brave enough to have these conversations. I didn't have to bring up my consent issue here today, but I think it's important that, you know, even as a leader of a community that, uh, mistakes are made in this space. And that's really why we set up uh, the play experience the way we do to say, hey, let's talk about boundaries from mm-hmm. at, from the jump, nonverbal and verbal types of intimacy, um, different ways for us to to engage with art and each other so that when it does come time to play, you've collected a lot of information before you make that move. Yeah. Yeah. It's so true. And, and I will say that like personally, I did feel safe and I did feel cause, cause me and this person, we were going in and out of a lot of those exercises together. And so, uh, by the time, so we went through the, the Tantra stuff together. So like the Tantra workshop was like so beautiful upstairs. Mm. And so you threw the rose into the ocean, huh? Yeah. We threw the rose into the ocean together. Yeah. yeah like he, he like found, we just kept finding, I mean, I think he was finding me, but, <laughs> but I appreciate Or you guys it. were finding each other. We were finding right. each Come other. Well, now, it was kind of like right? I would turn around and then like he'd be there. So <laughs> like, like, you know, Hey, what's going on? <laughs> <laughs> but not in a creepy way. It was yeah. not in a creepy way. It was just like, okay. Mm-hmm. Um, but there was this moment, uh, when we were in the Tantra exercises. And so one of the, uh, exercises, if you felt comfortable was to do, um, I forget what it's called, but the, when you're sitting in the fem- feminine and masculine, regardless of your genders, mm-hmm. um, and you've like legs over each other, or whatever. So like we were in that world and we were in that space and there was a moment that, uh, I think it was when we got up to our heart chakras. And so like, you know, we're heart to heart, we're body to body, we're really close. And there was just this moment that I said to myself inside my head, like, release into this person. He has been here the whole night. Mm -hmm. You have had all of these experiences with this person. He's been here. He's been showing up for you. He's literally holding you right now. He is whole. I'm like getting emotional just saying this because it's such a profound experience. Again, even if I never see him in my life again, which I will, but like, even if I don't, it's fine because it was still such a beautiful, profound experience, especially because it is hard for women to let go. It's hard for everybody to let go, but to find that safety. But we had been in all of these experiences up until this moment. And so then there was that moment of releasing into him and breathing together and just allowing our bodies and our souls to sync up. Um, and then eventually, you know, we did start to play and then it went into the, the sound bath and like, I had an orgasm with the fucking gong and I don't know who who was following who, but it was fucking incredible that like I was escalating as this fucking gong was escalating. And it was just like, I don't know what's happening. I'm on drugs and I'm not on drugs. And like, I felt like I was on drugs all night. Shout out out to my girl, Nusha, who does the sound bath. She, she did a sound bath for us from, um, the first uh, tantric temple that we did. And I didn't realize that was Nusha. Yeah. Oh my God. Nusha did the sound bath. I met her later in the night. She, I mean, I have no idea what was going yeah, on in that room. So, she, you know, she, I went to her house one time and she did a sound bath and I was like, oh my God, this oh. is amazing. Um, and then she did it at the last tantra play and I went into that room and I just had this like, transformative healing experience. And I, yeah. you know, I had to snap out. I was like, bro, you're, you're throwing a party. You're throwing a party. Like, 
come on, come on back to us, you yeah, know? Yeah. And um, that's why I was like, oh my God, it's going to be so important to have her, um, you know, do this because of exactly what you're telling me. And, you know, thank you so much for, for sharing, you know, that those, those vulnerable and intimate moments you had, this is, this is why I love this. This is why I do this. This is why it's my passion because of the stories I hear mm -hmm. of authentic, deep connection. Um, when you come to this space, you know, with maybe an expectation or no expectations and you have this transformative or healing um, experience, this is why I do it. Like if you if you have sex, great, but if if you really connect with someone deeply and um, walk away thinking, you know what, I, I feel really good about that experience. Mm. That is what we're trying to do here. This is why we're creating a community and we're giving people the tools so we can shift this culture to be one of deeper connection and vulnerability. Um, that, that's why we're doing this. Yes. Uh, Oh, and it felt very, um, it was kismet that I was even able to go because when we spoke, I was not available for this party. And yeah. you were like, I really hope you can come because Tantra is going to be really, and I'm like, I really do need that. And like all this other shit just happened and I was able to go and I'm, I'm just so grateful. So thank you for reaching out to me oh. and being like, Hey, let's, let's talk. No, so, of course. you it, know, it's <clears throat> it was a gift. It's one of those things like, you know, I, I really do put a lot of energy and work into getting certain people at the party and I'll, I'll be like, look, whatever it is that you got to do that day, like, please just, if you can alter it, you know, especially when I know you're going to be a good fit for a certain party, mm. right? Like you coming to the Tantra party versus maybe our matrix party. Um, Which I think still sounds dope. <laughs> <laughs> matrix party is a little more intermediate. Yeah, uh, yeah, it, yeah. Is, it is a wild oh, one. Yeah. It's um, what we're, what one of the parties we're known for and then that we do every single year. Um, but the reason I, I put that energy in is because all you have to go is one time to the play. Mm -hmm. And if you go one time, that's it. Yeah. Now, at least you're aware of there's another way to experience this space. Yeah. Not that it's better or worse. Just here's another option. Yeah. Because don't get me wrong. Sometimes I just like going to the 20 or 30 person free party that my friend throws and hanging out and, you know, playing all night. That's great. But, you know, I tell people play, the play is, is the reason our tickets are the price that they are. I want you to feel like you're going to Disneyland. Yeah, it you feels know, like that. You mm -hmm. saved up. All right. Now come on to the play. Enjoy yourself. Um, and that's the other unique aspect about, um, you know, going back to my the thing I was saying before, the four aspects that make us unique. The last one is that we only allow 50% returning guests and 50% mm, new guests. Yeah, I love that. To make sure, you know, for people who always go to play parties, you know, and you're in that same group, mm. right? When you first got there, like almost everybody was an option. But by like the third time you play at these that's that, that event, it's like, okay, well, how many people can I actually hook up with? Yeah, like, yeah. There's some, Who's left? there's some politics here, right? Yeah. <laughs> and like I can't just, you know. We have some history. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so being able to, you know, come into this space where, okay, well, 50% of the people have experienced this one time, which means they know the vibe we're going for, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. But the other 50%, because they're new, they're not going to feel like the new person there. Yeah. How, you know, I've been to so many play parties. It was like, well, clearly everybody knows each other. Yeah. I, I didn't go on the fucking Tahoe trip. So like, here yeah, I am, not I really like be able to drop in the conversation. And I'm feeling like the new piece of meat. And I can see like this woman's hooking up with me because like there's something else going on. She's like, I'm not I am. Really like of. what's happening right right you're just doing are you made doing this to make him jealous is that what i'm right up on here hmm. <laughs> it's the push interesting <laughs> like i'm oh gonna keep God. going though um, but yeah. the point yeah. is is um we want people to we want new energy new creativity in the space because this is a, a creative yeah. space right so getting new artists and energies in there um but also everybody who's there for a returning guest, they know how it feels to be that new person. Yeah. So you get all these people like, you know what? I've been there before. Let me make sure they feel welcome. Yeah. Yeah. Right? And I definitely, I felt that it was, it was a really great community. Um, this is 
pretty sure the longest episode I've ever oh, done because no. I could talk to you forever. There's just like so many things because like obviously Our first interview was like a 45 minute phone call. I, I was know. like, you want to just make this into the podcast? <laughs> Is this or, like, it? I mean, and that one could have been because we went into like so many different topics on that call. But of course, like having gone through the party, I'm like, there are just so many things I want to share because it was so much fun. Um, but what do you want to share with the people? So with the comedians, I give them, I give them a pop quiz, but okay. you're in the field. So uh, I want to give you the opportunity, even though you've dropped so many great nuggets. Uh, what is like the one thing you'd like to leave people with? Oh man. Okay. You know, I said it, I said it earlier when, when you go to these play parties, it's, it's about the willingness to be vulnerable. You know, um, it's, it's showing up as your best self, knowing that there's people in this space that may have trauma. You know, there's a lot of women out there with trauma and there's a lot of men out there with trauma too. Mm -hmm. And we're all in this patriarchy that's created these toxic interactions. So, um, you know, I challenge you to, to show up as your best self, you know, whatever that means for you, just try to show up as your best. Don't come with taker energy, come with the, the giving energy. How can I, how can I add to this experience? How can I make somebody else's experience here more positive? Um, so that's. That's the little nugget. Um, I also have a shameless plug. Yeah, do it. Because we're right now, it's all like, how can people find you? Oh, okay. So, yeah, so do yeah, all the things. Find us on Instagram at The Play LA. Um, you can go to our website, uh, theplay.la. Oh, I'm sorry. The Instagram is theplay.la. LA. Yeah, yeah, at theplay.la. It's going to be in the show notes anyway. Perfect. So, yeah. And then the other thing is that we're creating, um, we've just created an app. We just released our app, uh, The Play Network. Yeah. Uh, we're super excited about this because we don't allow cell phones in the space. Mm -hmm. So you're like, oh man, how do can I connect I get, with that yeah, guy? Right? Yeah, yeah. Like I didn't get his number after. So like it's fine. Sign up for the app. Now mm -hmm. the cool part about the app um, is that you saw there was a photographer there. Yeah. So didn't every, even make it up to that room. <laughs> right. Every party we have pictures from. We have hundreds of pictures, but we only post like three on Instagram. Yeah. So you can see the gallery of all the art. So if you appreciate Aww. art, you know, you can just go through, check it out. You're able to connect with people. We kind of set it up like Reddit. So you can have like, you know, here's the hill I'll die on. Or, <laughs> or um, what do you think of my outfit? You know, yeah. or um, we have a spot for unicorns. We have, um, oh, my favorite, uh, we have like a nudes category. So it's like um, him, her, us, them, Pets. Ooh. Well, pet nudes. Well, pet you know? nudes. Yeah, exactly. Oh because people love sharing their pets. Of course. Um, but <laughs> yeah, we have like certain kinks as well in there. So it's like, you know, um, there's like a sub category for like spank me, choke me, degrade me. Love that. Uh, memes me. If you just memes fucking me. Who like doesn't memes, love a fucking you know? meme? So it's a great place to connect. The other cool part is that you can find people in your area. Mm -hmm. um, and lastly, a big reason to join is that we have so many cool artists in our network. Yeah. So if you're an artist, you can post your art. You can post your service. I'm a masseuse. Hey, here's my service. Mm -hmm. um, <clears throat> And then we've partnered with, you know, uh, other companies like The Pleasure Chest. If you're in the Play Network, um, you get a 15% discount in store at The Pleasure Chest nice. or 10% online. Um, we have a, our sister company, which is a BDSM space. Um, you know, you can go to their party for like 50% off because I try not to mix BDSM with the play parties. Yeah. Because um, I, what I hate seeing is like, you know, you're so deep in this subspace and someone comes up like, oh my God, girl, I love your hair. Yeah. It's like, whoa, 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 you took me out. So like, no, 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 we no, no, still no. want you to get those kinks, but yeah. here's a space that's going to be able to support it a little more. Yeah. Um, yeah. And then the big, you know, our pillars for this are, you know, connection, community, and education. Yes. Or, I'm sorry, it's connection, opportunity, and education. Yeah, yeah. So, uh, we talked about the connection. We talked about the opportunity, but the education um, is a big part to where we have courses and, you know, Allie of Passport to Pleasure, she's really helping facilitate that to where you have so much you can take these type of courses. We've got book clubs, like, mm -hmm. hey, here's some great reading. Love um, that. So just, Obviously, I love that. <laughs> yeah, so try, just trying to make a space to where like, hey, Ariel, if you had a service that you'd like to offer, like, you know, you're, con you're consulting and you're um, uh, producing and, um, you know, your expertise, yeah. you, know, you can post and there was like, hey, if anybody's looking for, um, you know, a, a therapist or a, a coach, yeah. you know, 
I'm happy to find me and you've probably seen me at the play. Yeah. You might have yeah. seen me have an orgasm. It's <laughs> beautiful. You're welcome. <laughs> We're eating cookies with a light whip. Yes. <laughs> I love that. Well, thank you so much for coming on the show. This was, I mean, just as delightful as a conversation as I expected it to be. Uh, Sorry, not sorry that it's so fucking long. Hope y'all stayed. And if you did, like it, subscribe, tell a friend, send this to someone. And lastly, Ariel, I, I say this to, you know, all the podcasters that I get to have these beautiful conversations with. Thank you. Right. It, takes individuals like yourself having these positive conversations that are serious and are fun and that are low pressure to where people can be vulnerable and open up about the space and show the space in a positive light. And this is how we grow the community. This is how we give people the tools to interact with this community and really how we create deeper, more authentic human connections. So thank you for everything that you're doing. Aw, the Kimi chills. Thank you. This is uh, it's it's been a gift doing this show, and I'm really excited to see everything that's going to come over come from it over the next you know 10 years, 20 years. Even if podcasting goes away, I'll be on a different platform. Don't worry. But this is you know I I really love getting to connect deeper with people like yourself and just explore how fucked up our sex education was and all the different ways that we're trying to resolve that. So it's uh, thank you for doing what you do and for coming here. And this was so good. So I guess that's it, everybody. Love you. Bye.